This is Kathleen Colton. It's August 5th, 2017. Here we are in Campton Hills, Illinois at what our former neighbor used to call the Colton Compound on our two and a quarter acres of property. And I'm going to take a walking tour of my vegetable garden in celebration of the fact this is almost the first anniversary of my full retirement last August of 2016 and this is what a vegetable garden looks like when you have time to spread out throughout the week instead of spending eight hours on every Saturday while you're working for a living and uh, here's my my barn my little shed and Stanley Colton is lounging right in front of it it's a real good sized shed where I keep all my tools and we store my rototiller whose name is Tuffy. I'll walk in and whoops the door just slammed because of the wind. There's Tuffy right there. Tuffy is the best rototiller in the world. Self-propelled you can use one hand. Sometimes the hardest thing is just to get it started. So here's our walking tour of my garden, my vegetable garden. No uh, flowers except for the marigolds that are used to keep the rabbits out, which works pretty well. Red peppers. So the first thing we're looking at here are the asparagus ferns, which is a complete and total mess. That was that is the asparagus patch, and it goes to seed every year after spring asparagus is harvested, and it stays like that until I cut them down in the fall. And actually, the Japanese beetles like them, and it draws the beetles away from Tom's Vineyard. So what we're looking at first is kale, and I have three plantings. Uh, the first planting, of course, is the bigger one on the outside, and the second planting is the second biggest one on the other outside, and then the third planting is in the middle, and it's struggling. It's not doing so well, so we don't really expect much of it. Good thing about kale is that once it starts to grow and get a good picture of it right here, it grows all year. Uh, it's best starting probably in May and it goes all the way until we leave for Arizona. Last year I picked it the morning that we left, picked a bunch of bags full, put it in the thule that we have on top of the truck and when we got to Arizona put it in the refrigerator and we were eating it through December and January. Next I'm going to be looking at my cherry tomato plants which I'm doing something different with this year. All of my tomatoes. Uh, what I did, what I've always done is to run a stake down the middle of the garden with garden fencing this year I decided, because the tomatoes weren't doing as well as I wanted them to, to do a couple of things. One was not to run the stake and the fence down the middle of the tomato patch, but rather to stake them individually. And I bought bigger plants this year. Again, we're still looking at the cherry tomatoes. And they grow in clusters. We've had quite a few so far. And there's one that's ripening that's going to come off after this video is done when I harvest. This is the third plant, which is doing pretty well. So with the tomatoes, what I decided to do this year, this was on the advice of one of my neighbors, is to try to, to take some of the acidity out of the soil. So I, I first I, last fall, what we did was we put bags and bags and bags of mushroom compost, organic mushroom compost. And we tilled it into the soil last fall in preparation for this year. And uh, it seems to have worked. And then there goes Murphy who just flew by. And uh, I also then in the spring bought some lime and put lime in to try to deal with the acidity and uh, tilled that in as well before planting. And so the tomatoes have done really, really well. There are actually, as I scan down the row here, there are actually only 12 plants in here. 
and they look as good as the 24 that I usually plant. And these are better boys, which are a burpee tomato. And right in front of the tomato plants is my basil, which serves a couple of purposes. One, of course, for culinary purposes, but the second is keeps tomato worms away from the tomatoes. The tomato worms will eat the leaves and decimate your plant if you let them. So going back a little bit, we're looking at right now my leeks, which have been struggling, but they're actually growing pretty well now. I planted a half row and didn't get great germination in the leeks, but was able to save quite a few of them. And this one right here is probably the best and will, won't be harvested for maybe six weeks or so until it gets nice and big and meaty. Next to that is cabbage. And I always plant one row of cabbage every year. It's called early Anna. It uh, forms heads pretty early. But the good thing about it is, no matter how many times you plant it throughout the year, you have it all year. Uh, you can put one planting in, which is what this is, and it'll keep growing. Some of the plants grow at a, a fast rate, some grow at a slow rate. Right here is where we took our first head of cabbage out last week. And we have what we call kale slaw, which is cabbage and kale made into a cold slaw. Next to the cabbage are the beans. And they're actually recovering, even though they look pretty bad right now. They looked a whole lot worse a couple weeks ago, thanks to my friends, the rabbits, who came through and just as the beans were flowering, decided they were going to eat them. The flowers, that is. So they ate the flowers, but beans are resilient. And you can see some on the vine here. They reflowered and re perpetuated themselves, if there is such a word. And so we've gotten a, a meal out of uh, them so far, and I expect to harvest some today. I'm waiting for it to get a little bit more wet. We need some rain. You can see how dry the garden is. And then I'm going to be planting a second planting of beans and other vegetables, including carrots. Speaking of carrots, my carrots are terrible this year. Uh, I got really bad germination for whatever reason. These are carrots. You can see how sparse they are. We usually get tons and tons of carrots. This is a good illustration right here of a carrot. Oops, that's a weed. A carrot that had its top, there it is, his top snipped off again by a bunny. And the way that we deal with the rabbits is we live in harmony with the rabbits and we let them eat a certain amount of food, hopefully not too much. When it gets to the point where they do something like eating all my flowers off my beans, then I will spread red pepper flakes along the bottom of the soil. And the bunnies don't like that, obviously. Now we're looking at my tomatoes and you can see Stan and Murphy, there's Stan. There's Murphy, who love to walk in the garden, because I walk in the garden, so they think that that's what gardens are for. They've been doing that since they were puppies. Murphy, please move your head. This is a good example of the kind of tomatoes I'm getting this year so far. We're going to eat our first tomato tonight. Walking along the other side of the tomato plants, you can see how many tomatoes they have. They're uh, growing in clusters. Where is that? Right there. And they're very beautiful. They, um, they're big, relatively big. And there it is. This one is just starting to turn on the top, as you can see. When they start to get yellow on the top, that's when I pick them. I don't wait until they're red on the vine because that takes some strength away from the plant. So. Again, what I'm going to be doing after I finish here is harvesting some tomatoes. This one on top is ready to harvest. This one that Murphy just knocked me, that one's ready to harvest. And there are quite a few in here that are ready to harvest. 
and we bring them inside. We have a ripening bowl which has holes in it. I bought that in Colorado a few years ago. And you can put a tomato in there that's just turning and in three or four days you have a ripe tomato. At the very back of my tomato plants are my Hungarian peppers. They are sweet pepper. You can pick them when they're yellow. You can see all the peppers there. Or you can wait until they get orange or red. That one's orange. This one's turning orange. They'll get bright red if you let them. I have two of those plants, which is plenty because they always seem to grow tremendously. Back here in the back are my pumpkins, which are doing great this year as far as their leaves go. Those are all pumpkin plants. You can see the picket fence in front of the pumpkins. And that's a new feature this year. Uh, Tom and I went and bought, it's a 15 foot long white, little white picket fence. It's only a couple of feet tall. But I wanted to make sure that the pumpkins would not intrude on the melons that are in front of them, as you can see in this shot. And that, by the way, those yellow flowers are my marigolds to keep the bunnies out. But I wanted to separate the pumpkins from the cantaloupe. Uh, and give everybody room to grow on its own. And as far as the pumpkins go, you can see this is how they start out. This is, and I'm going to take off, this was the flower of the pumpkin. The female flower. And that's the little baby pumpkin that's starting. And I'm going to move this vine back into the garden because it's kind of going out. And let's see if we can find a pumpkin. Murphy, help me find a pumpkin here. So we can record what a pumpkin looks like before it gets to be orange and red and big. So right there is a pumpkin. I know there's one on the other side. It's hard to see. As you can see, these leaves are huge. And they cover up the pumpkins to give them protection. Right here, you can see my milk plant. I have a couple of milk plant in the back of the garden for the butterflies, the monarch butterflies, which only eat and lay their eggs on milk plant. This property is a certified monarch um, sanctuary. I think that's what it's called. We have a sign out front. We were certified. And what that means is that we have enough food for them which is the milk plant itself which only grows in certain areas and other things like water just like it is for every other creature um, i'm going to walk back around see if i can get in front of the pumpkins because i saw another pumpkin that was nice and big that i want to film but the Monarch Sanctuary is a certification you can receive from the Monarch Society. Monarchs are an endangered species. They only come back up here in the summertime. And then they fly all the way down to Mexico, where you used to be able to see millions of them. And now, because of pesticides and farming methods, big agra, and all the other bad things that are happening to the environment, has eliminated a good portion of the monarch public population. So people like Tom and I and other people that care about nature and butterflies, which are essential for propagation of plants, as well as bees, of course, are trying to preserve and protect these beautiful creatures. So the other melon that I found earlier is right there. And that's probably the biggest one so far that I've seen in this garden. Now I'm going to turn and shoot a picture of my creme de la creme melons. These are a cross between a Crenshaw and a cantaloupe. And they are a hybrid melon that I get from Burpee Seed Company. And last year... We did okay. It goes from year to year. It depends on how much rain you get, how much heat. Melons love heat and rain just like pumpkins do. 
and they have done so far this year pretty well. Here's one right here that is a baby yet, but it's pretty good size and it'll grow to about twice that size. And then when it's ready, and there's another one over here that I'm going to fill, a uh, smaller baby. And there are a bunch of them in here that you can't see, as I said. There's another one. Because the leaves protect the melons as well. Here's a bigger one right here. But depending on the weather and other conditions, um, you get a good crop. <laughs> the only problem is they all come in at the same time, pretty much. So the neighbors have enjoyed my creme de la creme melons for quite a long time. And uh, so this is a view from the melon patch. And you can see the fence separating the pumpkins. And it's actually done a spectacular job of keeping the pumpkins at bay. Otherwise, this would be pumpkins and melons. And it's just kind of hard to harvest. And I, I think the pumpkins should have their own space and the melons should have their own space. Big surprise for this year. Cucumbers. These are pickling cucumbers. And looky here. I planted an entire row of pickling cucumbers. Now I've learned from experience that pickling cucumbers will become regular eating cucumbers if you let them. You can hear a plane going by. And this is exactly what happened. And in addition to that, planting a whole row, which I have never done before and will probably never do again, I've got more cucumbers than I could ever need. So the, the again, the neighbors have been benefiting from the cucumbers. My neighbor next door has a nice garden. He doesn't grow cucumbers. He only grows the things that he likes, which is fine. So here's an example of a pickling cucumber that left to its own devices became a nice cucumber for eating, making salads. And then here is, if I can get a picture of it, here is a pickling cucumber in the making. And there goes Murphy walking right through the cucumbers. You can see his foot. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's Stan. There goes Murphy. And I've been making, here's, here's another uh, pickling cucumber right there. I've been making refrigerator pickles which Tom says he loves and they, they really taste good. I brought some up to dad. And so we have kind of the best of both worlds cucumber wise because we have salad cucumbers and pickling cucumbers. And here's another good example of, I can get a good shot of it, of a little guy and right next to a, a bigger guy. And again, I'm going to be doing some harvesting after I finish shooting this video. So now walking over to my potato bins. These are whiskey barrels which Tom ordered from Kentucky and they were shipped up here oh, I don't know maybe 10 years ago now and this looks terrible it looks like you wouldn't get anything it's got weeds around it even though I've been fighting the weeds all summer but this is the way potatoes look in August. This one, the second bin has already died off and you can actually see a potato sitting on the top. Now that potato is a little potato and that's gonna get buried because it's way too small for anything. But this is how the potatoes look when you take them out of the, the bins. Again, I'm gonna be harvesting after I shoot this video. There's another one right there. And we're going to have steaks and mashed potatoes tonight. Now these can stay in the bins until fall. Uh, the weather doesn't affect them. It doesn't ruin them. You can see this one is infested with weeds, even though I've had these cleared out again and again and again. And it's so dry, I can't pull that weed out. This, these potatoes are still growing. You can see by the plants. And I believe the, the deer came by and paid me a visit and decided to eat 
some of the potato tops, but not enough because potatoes are root crops, not enough to really destroy them. So there's a nice shot of a weed next to potatoes that are almost done growing. So this is another shot of my garden from this angle. Murphy says hi. Going back, he's standing, looking, he's actually looking for frogs and snakes, which he loves to hunt. And this is probably the best garden I've ever had in the almost 22 years that we've lived here. And I attribute that, as I said at the beginning, to the fact that I've had plenty of time. Oops, I just dropped the camera because a mosquito tried to bite me. I've had plenty of time to work out here. I'm going to have to put some bug spray on. I've had plenty of time to work out here. I've had plenty of time to spend at my leisure, ha ha ha. Uh, even though it's hard work, it's productive work. This garden gives us tons of food to eat every year. And it is a wonderful thing to have. It's all organic, no chemicals, no pesticides, nothing to harm the earth or the bees or the rest of the planet. You can eat right out of this garden. You don't even have to wash anything. As my grandmother used to say, you have to eat a bushel of dirt before you can go to heaven. I've eaten more than that in my time. But anyway, this is my vegetable garden in Campton Hills, Illinois. I'll take a kind of a wide ranging look. There's another perennial garden that we have for the monarch butterfly down there towards the end of the property with Tom's willow tree, one of his willow trees around. There's our detached garage in the back of our house. And Deacon's tree, his ash tree, which used to love to lay under, unfortunately, has been killed by the ash borers. But Tom and I can't bring ourselves to take it down because it's where I hang my bird feeders and my wind chimes. And over there is the pond. You can't see it because the trees are too big. And kind of a panoramic view of, uh, there's the millennial tree, which was planted in the year 2000. Our neighbor Karen gave us that. It was a little seedling and it's grown. And there's Tom's vineyard. That's another story. We've had so much rain early on in the season that it suffered from black rot and he had to pull all the fruit off of it. However, way down at the end of the yard, he has white grapes. These were red grapes, the wine grapes, so no wine this year, but he has white grapes that are doing fairly well. We were able to stop the black rot in time and we're probably going to end up making jelly out of those because there aren't enough for wine. Uh, so they'll become jelly. And then he had planted new uh, grapes this year. He bought, he pulled out some that were dead. We've had really bad winters, not last winter, but the winter before and the one before that. Uh, and it was just too much for the grapes to take. So he pulled out 12 plants and planted 12 more. And this is his pride and joy willow tree that he put in some years ago. And this is the back of the property where we have a fence, our neighbors behind us. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Retirement is great. I love it. It's hard work. I work every day, <laughs> but I do a different kind of work. And uh, I hope, hopefully it's still doing good, at least for the earth, the planet, and our family. So signing off. Take one last picture of Stanley, who has decided that he's going to lay down in the middle of the yard. Stan is up. Now he's getting up. You can see how it's a little bit di difficult for him to get up. He's 13 years and two months old, and he's still chugging along. We hope he makes it to Arizona this year. As long as he can get in and out of the truck, he's going to go with us. So anyway, that's it. Signing off. Over and out. So, as an addendum to my video of a little while ago, 
I've been harvesting for about the last half hour and this is the result. As I said, more cucumbers than you probably would want to have. So those will be, most of those will be going to the neighbors. Next to them are the pickling babies. Those are the pickling cucumbers right there. This one will make nice spears, cut in quarters, and pickled. The next to those are the starting to ripen tomatoes. And as soon as they're showing a little bit of red or pink or orange, I pull them off the plant to give the plant some extra strength. And then right next to those are the mashed potatoes for tonight. Just pulled a few of the babies out. Those are new potatoes. They're bigger ones, hopefully at the bottom, but those will be used for mashed potatoes. So that's today's harvest. Probably come out and get some kale as well, unless Tom wants cucumber salad, which certainly would be an option on the menu tonight. August 5th, 2017.